So we have this scramble. Let's say you could solve it in 56 moves at best. You can also try solving on the inverse of the scramble. And for example, if you did that in 50 moves, you can just use that as your solution instead, as long as you also reverse your solution. You can try it out for yourself. Wait, let's quickly make sure you know how to reverse moves. Read the letters backwards, switch the clockwise and counterclockwise turns, and double turns are still double. So now when you get a scramble, you actually have two scrambles to try, which is more chances to get better cases. But switching scrambles can be done more than once, not just at the beginning. You can actually switch after completing any step, and this is called NIS. The rules are in the description just for reference, and it'll make sense once you see this example. All right, so this orange cross, the best way I can see how to solve it is one, two, three, four, five, six. So now let's try the inverse scramble and look at orange again. All right, this time orange is actually better. Uh, we can insert yellow next to blue, one, and then insert white, two, three, and then insert green, four, five. So that is the better cross solution, and I will pick that and write it here. Next, we're doing the first F to L pair, and I just want to see what's the shortest solution I can come up with. These two can be solved in seven moves. So I don't have anything shorter than seven moves, so I will go on the regular scramble. Even though we've already done some stuff on the inverse scramble, how we're gonna go back to the regular scramble is like this. First, we solve the cube. Next, we do the reverse of everything that we see right here. And then do the opposite scramble of what I was just on. And then apply whatever moves I have here, which is none. So I'm still on first pair, but I wanna see if I can do it in fewer moves here. And I can solve this one in five moves. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna write that down here. So for the second F-tool pair, I'll look for the shortest one I can find here. And I see this one and this one can be solved in five moves. One, two, three, four, five. Not the normal way you do this F-tool pair, but it's good to know short solutions like that sometimes. In the interest of time, I won't go back on the inverse. Five moves is very short, I will just write that down. All right, continuing on here for third pair, I noticed that I have this one and this one. And so again, this could be five moves just like I did before, but um, just trust me, the inverse is gonna have something better because I've already planned this all out. So again, to switch to the other scramble, I will do the inverse of everything I have here. And then we do the opposite scramble. And then we do everything that is here. So if you've done that correctly, you should now still be on third pair, just like we were before. And on the inverse scramble this time, we have the yellow-green pair, and that can be inserted in only four moves. So one, two, three, four. Now for the last F12 slot, we have the white-green pair, and this one can be inserted in eight moves. So let's see if we can beat that on the normal scramble. So again, we're on last F12 pair, and here I noticed this and this can be done in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next step is OLL, and I noticed that for this OLL, I know two algorithms that both take 11 moves, so I will go on the inverse and see what I have there. So again, we are on OLL, but for this OLL, I know a 10-move way to solve it, so that's better, and we'll do that one here. And next, what I see is for PLL, I have a J perm, and that takes 10 moves to solve, so I will go back to the normal scramble and see if I can do better than that. So this often happens for PLL, where the regular and the inverse have the same PLL when you switch. However, there is a difference here because if you use a particular algorithm, the algorithm I use for this PLL starts with a turn on the white side, which is a U-turn, then what that means is it will cancel with this last move that I'm doing here. And on the inverse, we didn't have anything like that. So in this case, I will actually save a move by doing PLL here rather than on the inverse. So how I was going to do this one was like this. And that's just the same algorithm I teach in my PLL tutorial. Now, once you've solved the cube, what you should do to get your final solution is take everything from your normal solution, and then after that, write the reverse of everything you did on the inverse solution. And make sure along the way you cancel moves. So if the same face is turned twice, make sure you write one equivalent move that does the same thing. And that's a 45 move solution using just CFOP and getting no luck at all. And there you go, that's NIST.